In this video, we are going to talk about the electrical conduction in the heart that leads to the pumping force that allows our heart to send blood and therefore the needed oxygen and nutrients to the rest of our body. At the end of the video, we will briefly talk about blood pressure and in the following video, we will compare the events in the heart discussed in this video to the results of an electrocardiogram. In the heart, there are certain autorhythmic cells that create electrical impulses which are sent to the contractile cells in the heart. These cells are important in regulating the heart rate. The sinoatrial node, or SA node, is the heart's natural pacemaker. It sends electrical signals which travel to the atrioventricular node, or AV node. That signal is then set down to the apex of the heart by way of the AV bundle and the bundle branches. The electrical signal then reaches the Purkinje fibers, which signal for the ventricles of the heart to contract. Let's take a closer look at what is happening in this signaling. The SA node sends an electrical signal to the contractile heart cells. These cells contain these intercalated discs, which help to hold the muscle cells together and contain gap junctions, which allow the easy passage of ions to allow depolarization to travel over the heart. Autorhythmic cells normally set the heart rate known as a sinus rhythm. When comparing the change in membrane potential of the autorhythmic cells, it looks different than the changing membrane potential of contractile cells, but we won't go into the details in this video. Here's a diagram showing how the electrical conduction relates to the contraction of the heart. First, the SA node depolarizes. The electrical activity goes rapidly to the AV node through the internodal pathways. Depolarization follows more slowly, contracting the atria. The conduction slows through the AV node, but depolarization moves rapidly down the ventricles to the apex of the heart. The depolarization then moves upward, contracting the ventricles. Switching gears, we are going to end by briefly talking about blood pressure. Blood pressure is the pressure of blood in the circulatory system, which is measured to understand the heart in a patient and diagnose defects in the heart and blood vessels. Blood pressure is commonly written as the systolic pressure over the diastolic pressure, such as 120 over 80. The systolic pressure is the maximum pressure created during a heartbeat, and the diastolic pressure represents the pressure in the arteries between contractions. Two other calculations are useful diagnostic tools pulse pressure, and mean arterial pressure, or MAP. Pulse pressure is calculated simply by subtracting the diastolic pressure from the systolic pressure and just tells us the difference between the two numbers. Then, the mean arterial pressure tells us the average pressure in a patient's arteries during one cardiac cycle. This is calculated by adding the diastolic pressure to one-third of the pulse pressure. The way to measure blood pressure was created by Nikolai Korotkov and is done by using a sphygmomanometer and a stethoscope. This is done by putting the cuff around the upper arm of the individual and the stethoscope over the brachial artery distal to the cuff. When the cuff is inflated to where it stops the arterial blood flow, no sound can be heard through the stethoscope. As the pressure in the cuff is released, sounds are created by the pulsatile blood flow through the compressed artery. When the first sound is heard, that will be the systolic pressure. When the artery is no longer compressed, it is silent again, and that will be the diastolic pressure.